three tap tap, please? Uh, <laughs> okay, so today um, is a one topic <coughs> discussion. We're going to talk about the uh, Southern Delivery System because of where we're at in the project stage. There's obviously been a lot of discussion and chatter about the Southern Delivery System uh, or also as it's known by its acronym SDS. Uh, through the Chieftain and through other circles, and, and if you interact in the springs, uh, this is a major uh, water project for this area and for the region. It essentially is a pipe that will be coming out of the Pueblo Dam and going all the way up to Colorado Springs, about 50 miles worth, uh, of which Pueblo West is a partner in that. And that's really the specifics of the, the, the topic today and what that means for us because there are um, individuals and or organizations or otherwise that even at this stage would still like to see this pipeline derailed and uh, the partners feel it's important to have a community understanding of its impact and Pueblo West is extremely um, impacted by this in a positive and beneficial so way. So you're not going to talk about return flows at all in the mountain? No, no. That's <laughs> a, <laughs> although that does factor in. Yeah, uh, we're I'm just sure not going to get into that detail. Yeah. If you, if you were here when I gave the state of the district address earlier this year, we did talk about our water portfolio as a whole. And essentially, we get uh, most of our drinking water out of the western slope. So it's Trans Mountain water that is actually moved across uh, the Rockies to the eastern slope into the Twin Lakes Reservoir. There's two of them up there making a twin, and then it flows down through the Arkansas into the Pueblo Reservoir, and from there, we're able to take out um, our water, pump it over the hill to our treatment station, and then distribute it out to our homes and businesses here. So that is our primary drinking uh, water reservoir. We, and I'll show you in a minute, uh, have one single outlet works, as it's called, which is essentially the connection or pipe that comes out of the southern end of the dam and that's where we take our water out and right at the dam, if you've driven down Juniper Road, you'll see a building there uh, towards the north side. That's our pump station and that's where we push it up and over uh, the Liberty Point area and then and it gravity flows down into our treatment facility not too far from here. It's processing at peak times, peak being in the summertime, a dry year like this, almost 12 million gallons a day to meet the demands of uh, the Pueblo West residents and businesses. That spike has a lot to do with uh, our desires to have trees and bushes and lawns and other things. Uh, almost half or more than half of that spike will be in direct relation to uh, summertime plants. We have 400 miles of pipe in our system, which is roughly about the same amount of miles as we have of roads to give you some perspective, and we have five water pump stations uh, that help uh, with get us get this water to where it needs to go. So it's, I will talk a little bit with the laser here uh, to kind of point out some of the schematics of how our water is currently working. Uh, in the dam itself right here, there's actually three outlet works. This is more of an FYI for you. What you don't see over here is, is there's an outlet that goes into the Bessemer ditch. So the Bessemer ditch will start flowing down and ultimately flow into Pueblo. That's one uh, place that water is extracted out of Pueblo Reservoir. The second, and then we'll get back to this, is about here, and that's a separate outlet works for the fish hatchery. So if you've been down that road, and there's a large fish hatchery that the state runs. They have their own pipes and outlet works that come specifically dedicated for the fish hatchery. And then there's the south outlet works, which comes out through here and ends up in this station here, where uh, ourselves, the Fountain Valley Authority, as well as the uh, Pueblo Board of Water Works and, and other minority water rights holders, that pipe comes out into here and then is distributed out from there to uh, different pipes, Fountain Valley goes up, Board of Water Works, and others downstream go this way. Our pipe actually is a 24-inch pipe that comes out and goes under all of this river and ends up in our pump station, uh, excuse me, right here. So we're coming right here and into our pump station there. So this is buried fairly deep, uh, quite a few feet underground, 
and has been there quite a while. So that's, that's how we get our water coming out. And from here, we actually have two pipes, a 24-inch and a 36-inch that are pumped up and over. But as you can see, two here, only one here, that can be problematic in terms of redundancy or otherwise. So we're going to talk a little bit more about that. We've talked about the, this elusive number of what's billed out for Pueblo. Is it double, triple, is it less? Well, that's a very hard target to uh, lasso down because we don't know. And best estimates are that our future growth, if we were to become fully built out, is probably around double where we're at now at 60,000-ish or so. Could be a little more, could be a little bit less. But we have to prepare for the future as past generations are prepared for thus our, our current time, which was their future, and we have to look at where we're going in terms of our growth. Obviously, we had some tremendous growth in the 2000s. Will we see that kind of growth again? Maybe, probably not. Uh, we still have to think about things that we put in place now that will be here for decades to come. Because homes and businesses will need water our 24-inch diameter pipe, which, as I mentioned, comes out here, goes here. Here's the hatchery. Here's Bessemer Ditch. You can see that uh, section there is uh, becoming too small to handle our water, our current water demand. So, 24-inch pipe, almost 12 million gallons a day. That's its capacity. We can't put more than that uh, through the pipe on any given day. So, we're essentially out of room. Number one issue: our capacity. Then. How do we get more water out? So we need, we need additional ways to, to do that. So what you can see here in blue uh, outlined is, this is the North Outlet Works. This is what SDS will provide us. So SDS will have a pipe that comes out here and continues on and heads north to Colorado Springs, found security along the way. But this is where we're gonna be able to tap off to get another outlet for ourselves to uh, address the capacity issue as well as other issues that we're going to talk about. But we do uh, get asked quite a bit, well, why do we need to spend so much money on, on building a new pipe and capacity? Why don't we just take our current water portfolio and conserve, and then we don't need to do all this, right? Does that seem to make sense? It may make sense out of brush. And it does make sense to, to conserve water in a, in a region that has that type of the kind of scarcity that we do uh, with that resource. We do have a conservation plan and goal in place of 9% over 20 years, and this will uh, impact our strategic planning in relation to needing to acquire fewer water rights, for example, because we've conserved and been able to, to keep those water rights more productive here. So we will uh, have that as part of the overall strategy, but it's not going to be enough to meet, as we talked about, future growth demands of this community that we hope will uh, come to fruition you know, over, uh, at a steady pace over time. So the Southern Delivery System is going to be part of that solution for us. It's 50 miles in pipe, as I mentioned. It enhances our Pueblo Dam because it adds the North Outlet Works that I just um, showed there and has a second uh, point of exit or egress for that water. It adds that new pipe to our system, but most importantly, as we talked about in relation to capacity, the first major issue is it'll increase our system capacity by one and a half times. So 12 million gallons a day is our peak capacity uh, that we have in our system. By adding this new pipe off the North Outlet Works, we will get an additional 18 million gallons a day, so one and a half times greater, and create our total capacity at 30 million gallons a day. 30 million gallons a day, we believe, is adequate for build out. So the uh, board is looking to invest now for literally decades to come. How big and is that pipe coming out of the SDS uh, pipe? We'll, we'll talk to it. We're going to get to that. I, I got a question. The very next slide for you. Uh, if you're going to do 30 million, and I'm assuming that's in the next five, six, seven years, uh, will the treatment plant handle that much? Yeah, the treatment plant will not handle 30 million gallons a day. Our treatment plant right now can handle uh, a, about 16 million gallons a day. 
So in order for us to get up to 30 million gallons, we would have to expand our treatment facility. The point is that there are a lot of septic systems. The sewage areas are more built down. That's right. That's right. So to your point, do, will we get to 30 million gallons capacity in five to seven years? No. We're, we're far from that. That 30 million gallons would be when this, the density in Pueblo West would be pretty tremendous. So that's when we're at 60,000 residents, maybe at you know 20 to 25,000 homes out here, for example. Then you might see the 30 million gallons. So we're building in excess capacity. We're, we are going to go beyond 12 million, 13, 14, 15. We'll, you know, five to seven years, we might be close to 20, but not 30. But we need that capacity over time um, for, for our system to bring that water up. Now, we can only bring the water that we own. So that's 30 million gallons a day is a lot of water in our current portfolio. We would drain our current portfolio quite a bit, uh, quite rapidly. So what we'll have over time is the, as our active current pursuit is we're always in, in the market for is to continue to build up the water rights because we don't have enough water rights right now for 60,000 residents, even with conservation. So we need to continue to build both our capacity of being able to, to have the water itself as well as the ability to move that water, which is what SDS helps us to do. That 24 inch pipe that comes out of the south outlet works and goes into our pump station is more than 30 years old right now. And as I mentioned, with it being underground, uh, under the river, we don't have the ability to inspect it like you would hope to want it to inspect. Uh, pieces of infrastructure with this kind of importance to you. So we, uh, we live every day on the fact that that pipe is bringing the water in. The new SDS pipe that is coming out to Rick's to question, it will come out of the dam at 90 inches, which is a fairly large pipe. It comes out at 90 inches, and we will actually, as it'll continue 90 inches, we will tap off of that with a 36 inch pipe so our, currently we have our 24 at 12 million gallons, 36 inches will give us our 18 million gallons, and it will go off the 90 inch into our pump station and move forward. But not far after that, the 90 inch pipe comes down to a 66 inch pipe. So if you've seen any of the blue pipe laying along the sides of the highway, Highway 50 either side, that's the 66 inch pipe that will be moving primarily, not far up from the dam, into the pump station that uh, Colorado Springs Utilities will be building as part of this. And from there, 66 pushing it all the way up Mountain Security uh, and uh, Colorado Springs. So capacity was our first issue. Redundancy is our second issue. And this is going to help our contingency planning for emergency. If that 24-inch pipe were to go out today, uh, we would be probably in an uncomfortable situation. Not catastrophic, but uncomfortable because we have to invoke our contingency plans, which would be pulling water straight from the river. And we can't pull as much as our current capacity is right now uh, during the course of the time we may have to repair that 24 inch pipe. Once we have our 36 inch pipe in, we don't have that concern any longer because we have built in redundancy between, and in fact, we can take one down for proactive maintenance that we currently can't do right now. Uh, with our pipe because we need to run that pipe all the time since it's our single source of water. Yes, Bob? Jack, the, uh, in line with that <clears throat> contingency, the, what is our current storage capacity for treated water? Well, we currently store about 10 to 11 million gallons a day of treated water. So, so if you a look at a, supply. a day, essentially a day supply. And so you, our, our north tanks and then our tanks, we have three tanks up north and we have a couple of tanks here and our wastewater, or our, our water treatment facility gives us about the 10 to 11 million gallons per day capacity. So that's a great astute point is that we keep on hand about a day's worth of water at our peak time. Now, if we're talking about the middle of winter, that may be three days worth of water because we will go down to two to four million gallons a day demand when it's, when it's winter time and there, we don't have the gardens and, and uh, plant life is, is uh, less than it is now. So this is probably just as key as the capacity is that our ability to be able to have uh, backup for repairs and in case one of them were to have an outage. 
as I mentioned, Colorado is a water scarce state. And up to this point, until recently, a lot of communities uh, who needed water as their lifeblood <coughs> have taken a unilateral approach to go out and try to meet their water demand. So they've been out trying to go and acquire water, get water for their own portfolios, build their own reservoirs for storage, uh, build their own infrastructure systems or otherwise. And it's been very much a kind of a unilateral, self-fulfilling self, uh, approach. The problem is, is that that landscape really has been tapped out. And the only way for communities to be, I think, successful in its future pursuits of meeting their communities is through partnerships. Partnerships are going to be important in two key areas. One of them is conveyance or the ability to move your water where you need to move it to. This allows multiple owners of water within the Pueblo Reservoir to move it out to where they need to get it to. The other one is storage. And when we're talking about raw water storage now, Bob, not treated water, where uh, we need to have water stored for years like we had this year, very dry year. The fact that we're not in water restrictions right now is a direct reflection of our ability to have been able to store water in years past. So we're not, ourselves, Pueblo for example, are not in water restrictions because we had pretty full storage tanks. And I say that tanks in, in relative terms. We have water stored in Twin Lakes and we have water stored in Pueblo Reservoir. We're using that savings right now. We're depleting that storage in order to get through this year, which makes us that much more concerned about this upcoming winter because water's best source is the snow, not the rain. So what we really want, and we didn't have a lot of snowpack last year, which caused our, our drop conditions this year, which was a great early, early summer uh, for golf, but we're hoping for a really, a really quick early winter and a wet winter because we need to get our storage back up. But storage is very expensive. These kind of conveyance projects are very expensive. Water as a whole is very expensive because of its scarcity, because of our terrain, because of uh, a variety of factors. For indi individual communities to be able to do these things on their own is going to be very cost prohibitive, if even possible or feasible. This is a great example of that because uh, by coming together, there's a natural and obvious economies of scale that you would have in a project like this. So we can we have the uh, joint uh, efforts towards permits, contracts, approvals, spreading the costs, sharing the benefits. Let's look at that for a couple less specifically. By the time, we estimate by the time we're all in on this SDS project, we'll have about $8 million invested into it. If you look at just the portion that Pueblo West is involved in or partnered in, it would, it, it would probably be around $32 million, we estimate, when it's all said and done. SDS as a whole is going to be somewhere between $850 million and a billion dollars as a, as a project end to end. Our portion of it, $32 million. Well, that's real dollars in relation to a community like ours and a budget like ours. So if you, you can derive from this fairly easily that if Pueblo West on its own said we needed a north outlet works and we need to get another pipe out and just for ourselves only, at least $32 million and probably more because you lose some of the economies of scale of that. Instead, by partnering, it cost us $8 million and we have the same amount of capacity that we would have had even if we wanted to go out and on our own. But to further the point of partnership is that the Bureau of Reclamation, the federal uh, agency uh, that you may, have, you may have heard of or not, owns Pueblo Reservoir and owns the dam. They decide what happens in relation to the dam, what, how water comes out, how it's stored, things of that nature. If Pueblo West by itself had gone to the Bureau of Reclamation and said, oh, hey, Bureau, we would like to poke another hole in the dam because we want to get another 18 MGD out of this for our community we need it. I don't think that they would have said yes. But because then the next community comes in and said, I'd like to poke a hole and I'd like to poke a hole and no. But the fact that there were four communities within a specific area that were willing to work together in partnership and come together for this 
that's one of the main reasons that the Bureau agreed to this project and adding another outlet works into the dam itself. And that's not only the, the, the numbers and cents side of it, but it's also the practical, real political side of it uh, when you look at the engineering of the dam and the landscape in general for us to be able to have this project. And I think it's very exemplary of <coughs> projects that will be necessary for communities in the future. We are uh, looking at uh, other projects as well in relation to storage. I don't, I don't really talk about it here because this, this is not a storage uh, project, but we need to partner with other communities for storage as well, and we're looking at that right now because we need to be able to weather more of these, uh, these droughts. Last year was the wettest year on record for Twin Lakes. Twin Lakes was the fullest that it had ever been. This year, it's the worst. Uh, it's, it's on pace to be the worst that it's ever been. But let's talk about some of the residual effects of uh, SDS as a whole. Uh, Pueblo Dam Connection, or our North Outlet Works, is uh, being led by ASI Constructors. ASI Constructors is a Pueblo West based company. They are international dam builders. They're very much under the radar. They're out at our industrial park if you go down Platteville, but they build dams all around the world. They've got projects going in Australia right now, Europe, other places, and by sheer coincidence or fortuitous nature, they happen to be based out of Pueblo West and they were here to do this for us. 50 plus Pueblo West contractors have been used on this, over $100 million just in the Southern Colorado contractors so far. The, the project itself is about $300 million into the 850 to one billion dollars or so. Uh, the pipe, as you see here, that's an example of the 66 inch pipe, has all been installed in Pueblo West and Pueblo County from Highway 50 um, North. So with that stretch, all the pipe is in the ground from Highway 50 to the Pueblo County border. It's already been buried. And what you're seeing now as you drive on 50 looking north is the revegetation process. So they're going back and trying to revegetate it to a natural landscape. They have done a good portion of the southern uh, element of that. And what they're building right now is, uh, as they're going down the hill, is they're going to start working on the pump station and the connection there. Now, we'll go to the end uh, here, and I'll talk a little bit about the timelines as well. But Pueblo West's uh, future really has a lot of reliance on the southern delivery system. We talked about reliability, capacity uh, for today, for tomorrow, and it provides what we need for the future uh, of Pueblo West, if it's going to have any future. Because frankly, if it wasn't for SDS, we didn't have any uh, short-term alternatives for ourselves to be able to increase capacity that were anywhere near uh, the, the $8 million cost that we're investing now. We could build another pipe under uh, the Arkansas. If we were even allowed to do that, it would have been much more expensive. This was a great opportunity for us, and that's why we're in part of this project as a whole. Now, I'll, I'll end with a couple of points. One, uh, the project itself, end-to-end -end project, is always been slated to be finished and running in about the 2016 to 2017 timeline. But because Pueblo West is so close out of the North Outlet Works and our pump station, we worked with Colorado Springs last year and specifically negotiated the ability to be able to take water out sooner for all the reasons mentioned here and the importance of those reasons, which they agreed and the other partners agreed as well that even though it's not flowing or not finished, we could get water to Pueblo West. We believe that there's uh, cause for optimism that we can have water flowing out of that pipeline to us uh, and our connection probably in the fall or later latter part of next year at this point. So three, three to three and a half years earlier than it would have been otherwise when it was first signed and launched. Uh, and that's, that's because of our ability to negotiate that with our partners. That being said, if you read in the newspaper, there still are some individuals and or entities who seem to be um, opponents or detractors of the Southern Delivery System that are trying to still create hurdles and obstacles. And I think it's important to know that we will be very, very uh, uh, 
vigilant in terms of going out and making sure that we get this online as quickly as we possibly can. And so you'll, you'll see that and there probably are some uh, uh, wranglings that are still out there. Some of it is not directly related to Pueblo West. You hear a lot about the Fountain Creek and we but we don't think Pueblo West um, should be held hostage for our water conveyance based on things and you'll see us debating that. Now, one last thing and then I see we've got a question here is that part of the uh, requirements for the Southern Delivery System was that they were going to be using our haul routes, uh, are using our roads for haul routes. And they have, and, and the haul routes are, are, are right on the end of, of be, their timeline of being used. And part of that was the requirement that Colorado Springs Utilities and the, the project itself pay to have our haul routes rehabilitated once they were um, finished being used. And those payments have already started uh, to be received. There was a final agreement made, you might have read in the paper, of $15 million, which will come out to Pueblo West Roads only. And primarily, the haul routes have been from Spalding on Purcell all the way up to the highway at exit 108. Uh, there is some discussions right now about us uh, extending that a little bit in terms of the rehabilitation to Hans Peak. So next year, what you could likely see is a complete rebuild of Purcell from Hans Peak to Highway 50, and then the subsequent two years after that, you'll see a progression north of rebuilding or rehabbing uh, Purcell all the way up to uh, exit 108 and some ancillary roads that, that uh, uh, were used to get out to certain, certain pipeline uh, sections or otherwise. So with that, I will uh, take a few questions or comments. What are some of the, I guess the, the folks who are against this whole deal, what are some of the issues that are right now? I mean, I can't see um, the other side of it, I guess. The, the, the larger 30,000 foot view is that there's a perception or misnomer that by putting a pipe into Pueblo Reservoir that it's going to take water out of this basin that should stay in this basin. That's, that's number one. So you've seen a lot of editorials or otherwise that say, well, water that's in Pueblo Reservoir now is going to leave Pueblo, this basin, go up to Colorado Springs, and potentially if, the, if they have, as we are uh, planning for the future, have excess capacity, that water can be sold even further up to Denver or otherwise. And that just doesn't seem right. The truth of the matter is, as I mentioned, is nobody can take any water out of Pueblo Reservoir that they don't own. And water is a property right in the state of Colorado, and it's, it's, it has the same ability as anything else, a car, home, or otherwise, for me to go and say, I've got some water, would you like to buy it? Okay, great. And we, it's a stock transaction in many cases, or, or otherwise, a, a water court decree. So none of the water that's being moved out is water that is owned by anybody than the owner that has it. But that, in general, is it going to draw down the reservoir level? or other? That's a big major principle uh, issue for some of the detractors. Um, secondly, they believe that the pipeline itself may have an adverse environmental impact. And a lot of that has to do with if you're moving more water up and it's going to get consumed and discharged, it's going to start coming down again. And where is it going to come down? It's going to come down the Fountain Creek. And the Fountain Creek, over time, has, has, has been abused to the point where if more water comes, it can be detrimental, could cause greater floods in the Pueblo area, um, or it's not treated as well since Colorado Springs is dumped effluent at times, or raw sewage at times. So there's a lack of trust that this is not going to somehow go up and come back and affect this area in particular. Those are the two major detractions of it. Yes, sir. Yeah, um uh, like this year, drought year, yeah. um, where everybody's you know watering their landscaping in excess, trying to keep it maintained. Is this sort of like a, an up year, a beneficial to the uh, water district as far as revenues and offsetting your operation and maintenance uh, budget? Does that make it more plush this year than it does other years? And then years when there's plenty of natural water and people are not watering their lawns and shutting down their sprinkler systems? Does it affect your operating budget? Absolutely. And, and so now, you know, you've delved into some of, some of my world in terms <laughs> of being able to forecast revenues or otherwise. We are a fee-for-service utility. 
We're not out to make a profit. We don't have shareholders. We're, we're out to provide, cover our costs, and that's it in relation to uh, providing water. Part of covering your cost is, though, is you have to be able to plan for the future cost of the capital replacements or needs or otherwise. In relation to our revenue this year, yes, revenue is trending up. We also uh, looked at, as part of our conservation efforts last year, of raising the cost in the higher consumptive buckets. So you pay based on your class or buckets, how much you use. And the higher consumptive buckets, you said, well, if you're going to use a lot more, you should pay a little bit more. And we did that. And the consumption stayed the same. So what did that equate to? It meant more revenue, which was not our intention. Our intention is not to go out and create the more revenue. It's to go out and preserve or, or ensure that we have the right water supplies that we need and we're covering our costs on that. But yes, it, so it, it fluctuates like everything else. We have a wet year, it's going to be less, and a dry year. My, my water bill almost doubled this year, yep. but your operating costs have basically got to be the same, so this, that money's going somewhere. Well, if you're, you're consuming more, our operating costs are going up because okay. we're pumping more, we're treating more water, we're pumping more water. I mean, it's all, it takes electricity and time and efforts and machines to do that. Okay. So, yes. Can you give us a little bit of history how the four community partnership uh, evolved? Did Colorado Springs recruit uh, partners in this? Did, did, you, did Bogoa see this as an opportunity and approach color? How did that partnership come, come about? It's my understanding. Pueblo West was not part of the original SDS. SDS was originally just Colorado Springs found in security up until about 2008, I believe, is when Pueblo West joined the SDS um, consortium to be part of this. And I don't know the answer uh, if Colorado Springs recruit Pueblo West or Pueblo West um, asked to be part of it. I would imagine that Pueblo West saw the opportunity and want, asked to be a part of it. But I, I wasn't part of those discussions or otherwise, but it, it would seem logical to me that Colorado Springs wouldn't care um, for $8 million to go out and recruit other partners. They already had the bonds or the funding for it to do it on their own. I think that's one of Don Sailing's marks, is that he's the one that sort of led that effort. Yeah. Right. Two comments or questions. Wasn't this all started, Springs started this because they were developing that ranch out east and they needed that water. Wasn't that the original intent of SDS? Yes, that was. And then that went away. That's correct. So that, with, there's no, I'm, I'm a detractor. I, I mean, I like that Pueblo West is doing this and I, I can see the reasons and it's a good reason. I don't like the fact that that problem went away their growth hasn't done that, and you say that they can they own water rights, they can do anything they want with the water rights, but isn't it true that they can't move Arkansas River water out of this basin and send it north? Uh, that that's a that's still up for legal because debate. that is the that's still up for legal debate. And that's part of the traction of it is whether or not they can do that, and and they would say legally that that yes they can, and others would say no that they couldn't because of the original compact here that created the frying pan Arkansas project back in the 60s. Uh, now. What I've heard, and Colorado Springs would be better to answer that question, is regardless of whether or not that was a portion of, of the, the demand for SDS was this, uh, this new housing development. If it's not that, it'll be other development. You have the Combat Abbreviation Brigade that's being expanded. There's a lot of other future growth that they need to get their water up that they own to their ultimate consumers, and that's their driving force. So they would probably, at least I've heard them say, well, that might have been part of it. It's not, but there's many other things that have changed since then that are equivalent or greater that still cause us to, to need to get that water. Not to mention Fountain Security want their water as well. So the other question is, Will they fill that pipeline 24-7 once it's running? No. no. That's, that's and neither will we, but that's, yeah. that's where you build capacity for the future. Right. So, yeah. so they'll fill the reservoirs, whatever they're doing, and store that water. Yeah. So that pump isn't going to be pumping. No, it might be 24-7, but it won't be very full. And they're only going to take what they need. No, no, no community wants to take more than it actually needs to consume. They prefer to leave it stored for the future. And I think that's a lot of the, the, the tractors. They think we've got freaking 
six foot height straw just sucking the water out of there every day and we're never going to see a lake that's been as full as it's been in the last few years. But unfortunately if you buy up north, uh, buy west and it comes into here, they own it. That's the problem. They can go up west and out of the lakes buy well, rice. Supposedly the contract that Arkansas Valley or the, the development of this dam and all, they were not supposed to sell any water out of this basin. Right. And so, so and there two, I'll just say there's the two things. The One, net. we try, Pueblo West tries uh, on a regular basis to trade our water, we call it exchange, with Colorado Springs and Aurora who own water in the reservoir. And we try to exchange with the water we own in Twin Lakes, which keeps our water in a lot of ways, keeps the reservoir fuller and they're not moving it out. We keep that here, they're moving it out from Twin Lakes instead. We constantly are trying to exchange. There is one more, if you saw the 50th anniversary, uh, proposed pipe that come out of it. That's called the Arkansas Valley Conduit, and that's another one that could attach to the south outlet work soon. That could be more water going down in dry years to farmers in the east. So the reservoir up and down is only going to be in direct relation to the mother nature bringing it in and the demands of those who own it taking it out. That's what fluctuates it. Now, my argument's always been that Aurora should have had to take it the water that they bought and take that water, not pristine Colorado water from the upper reaches of the Arkansas River. They should have had to take water out of that river at Crowley County yeah. where they bought it. We've got to get going. We're running late. Jack, thank you very much. Thank you very much. You've got 10 of these. No, thank you. thank you for coming in. Thanks. Great work. Okay. Uh, Rich Sully, you are uh, Rich, you are a four-way test. This is the truth. This is the, the truth. truth. It's a third old concern. It's a very old concern. concern. We'll build goodwill and better friendship. We'll build goodwill and better, better friendship. friendship. We'll be beneficial to all concerned. We'll be beneficial to all concerned.